Byerly RV in Eureka, Missouri. Welcome to Byerly RV University. Tonight we are going to do our spring ready uh, class. So we're going to talk about getting our campers ready for springtime uh, because the first day of spring was, first full day of spring was yesterday. Uh, the, uh, we uh, hit the uh, equinox there on Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday afternoon. But anyway, it is now officially spring and uh, time to get ready, right? Uh, Rick is actually downstairs and he is going to do a live dewinterization for you guys. Uh, so um, stick around for that here in just a minute. But first, I want to say thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to uh, subscribe to the Byerly RV YouTube channel. Click the bell icon. You'll be notified when we go live and when we put up new videos. We put up a really cool new video earlier. Um, on the brand new Wildwood 29 view floor plan uh, travel trailer. Awesome new bunkhouse. You can check that out. Uh, we've also got all the schools we've done on our YouTube channel as well as a lot of other uh, neat things. Anyway, um, if you like these type of things, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. Share the video. We appreciate that. Also, you can check us out on Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, and TikTok. So uh, that way you can keep up with all the latest news and videos here at Byerly RV. Um, Facebook's good. We put up, uh, all, we try to do as much stuff on there as possible, and we do our monthly update, things like that. Um, so um, speaking of things that are going on here, uh, but real quick, before we go down to Rick, I won't take too much of your time. I just want to mention that on March 29th and 30th, we are having our uh, our sale. It is the, uh, it is, hold on, I even made the commercial. Let me think about what is it. It is the, uh, be the, yeah, it's the new model clearance. Be the first at the campground with the newest models and floor plans, you guys. Um, you know, we've been through our year-end model clearance. And we've been through our show and everything else. And so now, you know, what we've done here is we have spent the winter collecting campers, right? As they've built them, they have brought them down here to Byerly RV. And we have collected them one by one so that we have a lot of them right now for you guys. Because as it warms up here, they will fly out of here a lot faster uh, than we receive them. And this year especially, for whatever reason, in 2024, um, there is so much new stuff, great new floor plans, innovations, great new toy haulers and versatile cargo trailers and trailers, travel trailers that are as tall as, uh, and, that, and that's the VCX series, by the way, but uh, from FS, is it FSI? Oh gosh, I can't, I get confused now, but um, the uh, Alta Extreme 365s that are travel trailers that are as tall as fifth wheels. We've got the brand new uh, Winnebago Access. I think that's what Rick's got here to do our dewinterizing on, so you're going to get to see that. Um, so new lines, great new stuff here at Byerly RV, and new lines for us, new floor plans from lines that we've had for 20 years, like Wildwood. So great stuff. You've got to see it. And we're having a sale to celebrate all that March 29th and 30th. Um, you can go, go to our website, of course, ByerlyRV.com, and see all these right now. Um, but come on out. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, there's going to be great deals, of course. Uh, you know, it was funny last week. Or, well, was it this week? I don't even know now. I think it was, yeah, earlier this week. We had a hard freeze, you guys. It got down to 28 degrees or even, I think it got down to 24 one night. And that is why the state parks and a lot of people do not turn on the water until April 1st. But we're coming up on that here. So this will be our last weekend without the water. And then after that, for Eclipse weekend, we will have water. That's right. Um, we've got in two weeks here, we've got the Eclipse coming up April 8th, Monday, April 8th. And here in St. Louis, Missouri, we are just north of the line of totality. Um, I know that uh, I hope you guys have made reservations or at least have somewhere to go. There's a lot of places to go. I really encourage you to get out and do that. Um, I know I've got a spot down at Trail of Tears State Park in Cape Girardeau. So that's like right on the line to get the maximum amount of totality. Hopefully it'll be clear, right? That's what we're all hoping for that day. But anyway, the eclipse is going to be a lot of fun. We've posted some stuff with information. If you're looking for places to go, you can check that out. Anyway, um, without further ado, I don't want to take any more of your time. I want us to go straight to... Uh, Rick, he's going to do a live dewinterization for you guys. Oh. Hello, and welcome to this year's dewinterizing video. We're doing it live again, like we've done the last couple of years. And this time, we're going to do one of our new product lines. It's a Winnebago. It's an Access. These are uh, pretty new to us. We just got them right before the show uh, last month. And... Uh, they're selling. So, so when we winterize or dewinterize, as we're doing here, um, the first thing we have to do is hook up a hose. So, we find where our city water comes in. We hook up our hose and we turn it on. We then 
can go inside and start working water through the faucets. So we come in at midship, so we're going to start up in the kitchen and kind of work our way back. That way we can get as much antifreeze out on the initial run as we can. So as you can see, we got pink coming out. And we want to run both sides, the hot and the cold. Now being that this is the furthest back from where we're hooked up at midship, it's going to take longer to get our pink out of here and actually get water running. So, as I said, we want to do both sides. Now since we still have antifreeze in other spots, this is still going to be a little foamy as you can see. So what we're going to do now, we've got most of the antifreeze out of this point, so we're going to work our way back and then we'll come back to this sink a little bit later and finish it off. So it doesn't matter where we start here in the bathroom. We can start at the shower, we can start at the sink, we can start at the toilet, doesn't matter. Since I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and start at the toilet. And as you can see, it didn't take long because we're just hooked up right outside there to get the pink out. So, and again, this shouldn't take very long to get to running clear water. I say that, it runs and runs and runs. <laughs> So I did start with the hot side, so it had to go up there and then come back because the water heater is up under the sink up there. But the cold side didn't take very long at all. As you can see, we've still got some foam in there, so there's still antifreeze in those lines. So we're going to come over here and do the shower now. And it'll take the hot just a little bit because, like I said, it's got to go up front. And this pink will stain this plastic, so you want to try and make sure when you're, when you're doing this that you rinse as much of that out as you can once you got your clear water running. That's why we tell you when you're doing your winterize in the, in the fall to make sure that you wipe everything out after so you don't have that staining come springtime. Alright, so the shower looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit the hot side over here again because we still had some pink in it. And as we run a little bit more, you can see that most of the foam is out. We still had some up in the front, so we're going to go back and hit that again. All right, so let's go back up front. We still got the outside shower, and that's probably where that's getting a lot of its pink from. But as you can see, since I've done the back now, I don't have any foam here. A little bit there when I changed over to cold, as it just got some of the residual out. But for the most part here at the kitchen sink, now we're clean. So we're going to go outside now to the outside shower, which is over by where we hooked up our hose at. We'll do that, and that should take care of our bathroom foam. the outside shower. We're just going to do the same thing here that we did inside. We're going to run until we're clear. Hard to tell here because I'm pumping it into a bucket whether I'm actually clear but as you look on the side over there you can kind of see that it's clear and I'm pushing the antifreeze off 
away from it. So, all right. So that makes us good there. Oops, sorry. All right. So the only thing we got left now is the water heater. Water heater on this one is an adventure. It's a, it's a little difficult to get to, as you'll see in a second. So, so the access to the water heater, also by the way, the winterizing line is up here if you happen to buy one of these. There's, a, there's an access panel that I pre-took off just so we didn't have to mess with it. But you can see the winterized line and valve is right here for, for your winterizing. The water heater valves are back there behind the water heater. And the only way to get to them is basically get down and crawl into the cabinet and reach back there and do it. So I'm going to have Piper step back a little bit and I'm going to climb down here and reach in here and get to these things. Like I said, you got to kind of climb in. So we've got the water on. So as soon as I do this, we're going to start pumping water into our hot water tank. So that back valve is all right. So now we're putting water into our hot water tank. All right, old man takes a while to get up. So normally what I would do is I would come out here. I would, when I first turn it on, I'd have the valve out or the plug out and I would let some water run out. But since this is a brand new unit, we don't, we're not worried about that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open this up, step back, cause it's gonna splash. But I'm gonna open this up and this lets the air vent out. This is just the pressure relief. It'll let the air vent out as we're filling the tank. So as soon as this water starts coming out here, then I'll close it. And then I'll go back inside and I'll open up a hot water line to finish bleeding the air out of the tank. And at that point, we'll be finished with our, our dewinterization. Um, this is really a, a very simple thing. I mean, you're doing, basically when you dewinterize, you're doing what you do every time you camp and you hook up and you use water. You're just running faucets. Um, and the goal here, of course, is just to get the pink out. Um, all right, so there's our water coming out. So now we know we're filled up to there. So, and like I said, I just go back inside to a faucet and this is gonna spit and spray as we get the rest of that air out of the tank and then it'll run clean. And that is basically all there is to dewinterizing a trailer. It's very simple. This is a very easy one. And uh, you can do this yourself at home or you can bring it here and we can do it for you, either one. We have our express lanes in the service center that are set up to get you in and get you out right away and do exactly these types of repairs. We can do um, bearing packs, we can do winterizes, dewinterizes, um, spot inspections and stuff like that. We got all kinds of things that we can do uh, in, our, in our express lanes that are designed to get you in and get you out the same day or within a couple of hours even. Um, they're, they're, we're, we've set this up so you can wait for your trailer instead of having to to drop it off and come back, you know, a week or two like like things used to be. So we're, we're running a completely, totally different type of service center over there now. We still have our long-term repairs and everything, but with this new express side, there's a lot of stuff that you can get done and you can get it done today instead of having to wait, drop your trailer off and wait a couple weeks or whatever. So. Uh, we're done down here. Um, Piper and I are going to walk back upstairs and join Dave and uh, Michael, and uh, we'll talk to you in just a minute. There you go. See how easy that is, you guys? It really is easy to dewinterize your camper. Uh, I don't know if it's, some of you might have caught that I did a dewinterization live on Facebook, um, oh, I don't know, a few weeks ago because we had a little bit of a warm stretch there. And, 
I wanted to go camping, so I just did a quick dewinterizing and grabbed Mike. I said, hey, let's just do this live. So we did that too, but it really is easy, you guys. You dewinterize, you're ready to go. And realistically, if you had to and you needed to rewinterize, uh, you know, you could do that um, for the price of a couple gallons of antifreeze and another 15 or 20 minutes of your time, which in my opinion is more than worth it uh, to be able to go take a trip, you know, um, at, on one of those warm weekends. Uh, I, I know, I don't know about you guys, but just been just itching to go this year, um, ready to get out, ready to go camping. Uh, it feels like it was a long winter, so I'm very, very happy that it is springtime now. Um, we're going to talk about some of the other things that you need to do to get your camper ready once Rick comes back up. Um, and I just want to mention uh, for some of you folks that may, I, I, you know, most of you are probably already aware, but uh, we do have our brand new service center. We have our brand new 16 bay service center open and our indoor and outdoor on site storage. Uh, you can contact us for more information on any of that. One of the coolest things about the new service center is that our wait times right now for easy, simple things. I don't know if they will last time I checked and I've been gone for a week, so I don't know, but the last time I checked, there was no wait time for work. Wow. So yes, that means that not only do we work on vehicles that were bought here, but we also work on vehicles that weren't bought here. So if you bought your vehicle, if you bought your camper from your neighbor down the street, or maybe you bought it from another dealership and their wait times are so long and you know, you're out of warranty and you just need some service work done, come on out to Byerly RV. Like I say, right now, there's virtually no wait time for easy jobs you know, that don't require the ordering of parts and things like that. We've got a new fast lane uh, that we've, we've initiated here with its dedicated manager and staff so that we can get vehicles in, literally not even have to unhook them sometimes, fix them and get them back out. Um, sometimes you call, I mean, we can literally get you in the next day uh, for services like this. This is a huge departure from not that long ago, you guys, when you remember that sometimes it was taking three and four weeks to get in for service. Now, that's not saying that for a major job or something like that, it's not gonna take Rick's back. It's not gonna take us, you know, we're gonna schedule that, and have to order parts, that's a different deal, you know. Uh, but when it comes to simple, easy fixes, I was just telling everybody about the new fast lane and stuff. Yeah, I was doing so, a little bit before I came up, tell them about it. Oh, right on, see, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I wasn't listening. Yeah, well, that's yeah, yeah. kind of normal. Well, we've had, uh, we, you know, technology's awesome. Really is. Yeah. It's also complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've we've had a couple technical snags so, here but we this got evening, this, but right? Yeah, no, I, no big deal. Uh, yeah. We were missing somewhat of a little bit of our communication there uh, yeah. for some of the night, but that's right. Now Rick's here. I'm here, so we're all good. And now we're going to talk about. I was saying that we're going to talk about some of the other stuff we need to. Do, yeah. Right? So I mean, so. basically, this is this is spring get ready. So uh, anybody that lives up in the Winsville, St. Peter's, Lake St. Louis, O'Fallon area knows what we just went through. And by the way, if you have any questions for us, uh, let us know in the comment section. So, but if you if you lived up in that North County area there or, or North St. Charles area, you know the hailstorms, you know what kind of damage oh. has been done, you know, cars. Um, I mean, there's a lot of plastic on the roof of an RV. Oh yeah, good point, Rick. The, the rubber membrane isn't gonna be hurt. I mean, unless you, you know, if you drop a meteorite on it or something, it'll be hurt. But as a general rule of thumb, even golf ball size or, or softball size hail isn't going to hurt the membrane. But yeah. it is going to break everything. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> James, thank you very much yes. for the question really quick. Yes, we absolutely work. Oh, yeah. Let me clarify We work on that. almost everything. Because uh, you may be yeah. asking this for a certain reason. We work on the motorhome camper side of the right, of the motorhome. Right. We do not work on chassis. Right. We don't do chassis work. Ford, Chevy, Mercedes, Freightliner, whatever it may be, those yeah. that requires very, very specific diagnostics, tools and equipment, and that is all done at those respective places. So right. we, we go to Broadway Ford. If we've got a big class A, for example, downtown here in St. Louis, we take our stuff to Freightliner in yeah. North St. Louis down there, right? Yeah. And uh, so there are places to, to so uh, just quick clarification. Chassis not to say that somewhere down along the line, we may add some of these things with right. the new service center, but right now, no, it, right. we don't do it. So, um, but thank you for the so, question. Yeah. yeah, thanks. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, as I was saying, all the plastic that is on the roof of your motorhome, your trailer, whatever it is, uh, is very vulnerable 
to damage from, from hail. So it's very important that after this storm that you went out to wherever your trailer is, if it's up in that area somewhere, uh, and inspect right. that top and make sure that you you haven't gotten broken vent lids and plumbing, you know, uh, plumbing uh, vents and, and uh, air conditioning shrouds and, and all that stuff, um, you know. And then it, it, obviously while you're doing that, you're going to do your spring inspections anyway. You're going to check all your roof seams and seals and everything right. and make sure that they're all good and ready. Uh, and, you know, if you need to have them inspected, then you can bring them in and... Um, we can do the insurance estimates and stuff. Uh, yep. If you do have damage and, and you're going to turn it into your insurance or you just want to know how much it's going to cost to get it fixed, you might pay for it out of pocket if you got a high deductible insurance or something. So that uh, that's um, state inspections. Yeah, we do them. So I try to avoid them, but, yeah, we, we legally we do them. So you can pretty much take that to any state inspection, though, um, Especially a truck place, any any truck center or anything will uh, will do state inspections on a motorhome. Also, there's nothing special about the inspection for. A they don't home. get emissions, right? Nope, and they do not get emissions. Just yeah. a safety so, inspection, yep, basically. Just a safety. Yeah. So, um, so, so we've talked about the roof. We've talked about uh, potential storm damage and stuff. So one of the next things that that we want to look at is is just our seams and seals along the front cap, rear cap, around windows, uh, compartment doors, anything that goes through the side of the camper, mm -hmm. you know, um, around the entry door, around all your windows, uh, like I said, compartment doors, um, things like where your cord stores, mm -hmm. um, your outside shower, you know, anything that goes through the side of that wall is a potential leak spot. And you want to make sure that they're sealing at least across the top and, and you know, about three quarters of the way down the sides of these things, you know, allowing uh, a spot underneath that if some water does get in there, it has a place to drain out instead of in is, is okay. Um, if but, they, um, what, and, and what exactly are they looking for then um, when they're looking at that? We're looking for like where it's separated, right? Yeah, you know? gaps, yeah. Um, separations, um, maybe, Maybe you had to have, you know, with the with the twist lock cords and stuff now, maybe you had to have one of them replaced and somebody didn't uh, get in there and seal it properly. So right. silicone is what we use on the side. I was going to say, so what do you want to use It's then, just right? RTV silicone. There you go. Clear, black, white, whatever your camper is, it doesn't matter. Um, the silicone is the important part. Um, if you got loose, old stuff, um, take a blunt... Uh, uh, plastic scraper or a, a, a putty knife or something, plastic putty knife, and you can scrape the loose stuff off before you put new in. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not going to do any good. Um, and then if you got uh, some alcohol, um, like brake cleaner or something like that, put it on a rag and, and just wipe the area before sure. you put the new stuff on. That'll get dirt and grime and, and any residual loose stuff that might be there. It'll get that off. Uh, Mike? Freeze Senior says, can hail cut a rubber roof? <laughs> Very rarely is it going to cut a rubber roof. But yes, if you get a big enough and a hard enough piece, that, and if, if the piece has got a lot of sharp edges or something on it, it could. But very rarely have I ever seen hail yeah. cut a rubber if roof. If it hits like right yeah. perfectly on the edge of a plywood roof that uh, yeah. rubber's wrapped over. It could do that. You know, that because then you got the you got the edge of the plywood and the the hailstone hitting in the right. same place. Yeah, and you kind of get that knife effect. But it it's very rare that hail will actually cut a rubber roof. Right on. So, but thanks for watching, man. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, Feel you free got to nothing better to do. from yeah. home. <laughs> Next time, we'll put a camera on you and put you up in a little corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you that don't, that don't know Mike Free Senior, that's our Santa Claus at, uh, at oh, Christmas time. Oh, 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 oh! Like, like motorhome okay, inspections. So you mean like an oh, inspection, yeah, yeah. like um, go through it and make sure Arkansas okay. doesn't have state inspections anymore. Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry for the yeah. misunderstanding there. No, we can. Yeah, we can do that. We do what we call a multi-point inspection on most every unit that comes in. 
Um, the only exception to that is like if you just bought it in the last six months or if you've had one in the last, you know, three months, you know, six months, something like that, then we won't do it. But if you if you come in and and bring it in for service or something like that, you haven't had one for a while, then we do what a, what we call a multi-point inspection, which is just we look over your unit and mm. we look for the same things that we're basically talking about here tonight. Right. You know? Um, it's a maintenance inspection is what it is. We check your tires, um, check the date codes on them, check for abnormal wear and stuff like that. Um, we look at your roof. We look at the ceilings. Um, we look at, uh, you know, everything on the outside and give it a, a visual inspection. We look at the, uh, the furnace and the water heater, make sure that uh, we don't see soot or something like that coming up from around them, which would indicate some kind of a blockage. Um, now, question, and there's a handful of other things that we do during that inspection that... So we also do, like, when, when we are going to, say, sell a vehicle, uh, we have something called a pre-delivery inspection, mm -hmm. which is a very, very thorough. This, this is like, this, this is testing all the right. appliances. This is testing, you know, doing a drop leak test on, on the this propane system. This is like system. a 200-point inspection. Right. Yeah. This is something that is hours, you know, we're talking four hours, $600 mm -hmm. or more type of thing. So, and that's just like on a travel trailer, motorhomes or more. It depends. But so if you really wanted it to be like literally tested and gone through as if we took it in on trade and we were going to sell it to somebody because that's what we do. We charge, I don't know, about 1500 bucks for prep and dock basically to get the things ready to, to cover the cost of how long it takes to actually properly go over one of these things when it comes to that. So we'll offer that. You know, we even, I mean, we'll let like folks that bought campers that want instruction. Well, you can have a technician and the hourly rate is the hourly rate and they will help you for mm -hmm. as long as you'd like. So we have a lot of different options as far mm -hmm. as that goes. So in the, in the service side, we have a couple of different things that uh, are, are um, um, we, have, we have two different versions of, uh, You're welcome. of a spring get ready. Thank you for participating. Thing, um, which is, we have one for a trailer, which includes a bearing pack. Okay. We have one that, that uh, is for other vehicles, or if you don't want the bearing pack, um, you can do that, where we actually go through, we check all of your appliance, we, we operate them. Okay. Um, it's kind of a, a short PDI, Okay. Uh, it, kind of what it is, but it, it goes through and we check all the main major appliances, the refrigerator, uh, the furnace, uh, the stove, the water heater, um, you know, all that stuff. And we operate them. We take readings of them. Uh, if you have a trailer and you want a bearing pack done, we do the bearing pack, which is uh, pa re clean and reseal the, the bearings, repack the bearings, uh, new uh, grease seals, and we check the brakes and operation and adjust them as needed uh, and air up the tires. I did that. Uh, all as part of the bearing this, pack. I did that this off season. I had the camper for two years, put 10,000 miles on it, and did a bearing pack. Yep. Um, the, uh, and it's, and, and I, you guys can just, if you call 636-938-2000, you can speak to any of the service advisors that can go over what Rick just said. 938-2020 uh, will put you to it by service advisor. Yeah, either way. Yep. Um, and, uh, but talk to one of them and they'd be happy to explain in more detail. Yeah. Um, and make an appointment for you. Absolutely. You like. so, Absolutely. Um, so, um, with the dewinterize, we've basically got the inside of the camper ready to go. We've got clean water and everything. Um, a lot of people like to sanitize their unit. So uh, basically to sanitize, we put water in a fresh tank with uh, about uh, half a cup of just chlorine bleach mm -hmm. to every five to 10 gallons of water. And then just run it through the system. There you go. Until you smell the bleach at the, at the faucets and leave that for about 24 hours and then flush it out real good. Drain the fresh tank, flush everything out, basically do another de-wind, right. you know, and that cleans out the lines and gives you nice, clean, sanitized lines. Um, if you're going to do so. something like that, at that point, you might as well go ahead and invest in, like, at least an inline filter for your hose. Yeah. Because if yeah. you're going to spend a day of your life sanitizing your plumbing system, you might as well filter the water that goes in. Because yeah. I used to do that, and I would, you know, sanitize it and stuff. And then even if I was filling the tank, that filter was on there. Yeah. <laughs> Just because yeah. I know what kind of water I was, you know, I mean, so that. You, know, so, you never know what you're getting. Right. You know, how hard it is or anything else, you know. So having, having the filters on, I think, is a good idea anyway. 
It's also a good time to wash the camper. You yep. know, I always like to mention that we should wash our camper every couple, you know, a couple of times a year. So yeah. not, you know, it also helps you as you're washing it, you're, you're, you're looking at it, you know, so you're going to do an examination, you're going to wash it, then you're going to, you know, just start it out with that. What, the washing? Yeah. Okay. So that's what we, usually that's what we tell them, wash the camper, it's been sitting there all winter. And, that's true. You know, it's dirty. We usually tell you to wash it first, so. Yeah, wash my, it. My fault. I missed that one. No, that's okay. I just, you know, hey, um, that's you know, and that's that's just it's you know, getting the camper ready is is easy. You know, this is also the time where if you like to do things like like spray lubricant on your, if you've got a slide out with the gears and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, your slide out seals. This would be a great time to put some Aerospace 303 or some sort of conditioner, some yeah. sort of UV protectant on there. This would be the time to do that after yeah. you wash it. You know, all those little things, if you like to do things like that. I say if you like to because not everybody does that, and that's fine too, but this is the time to, 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 to do yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you want to do as much of this maintenance stuff now mm -hmm. as you're getting ready for the season. That way, when the season gets here and you're ready to start using your camper, you're ready to go. Yeah. You know? One of the great things about doing this get ready now is if you do find something wrong, Right. You know, you get in there, my furnace isn't working, my water heater isn't working. You can call us, you can make that appointment, you can get in, we'll run you through the express site or whatever, however we need to get you, you in You can just out. trade that thing you know? in, the selection right now is the best it is all year, so, you yeah. know. There's I mean, always that. Right? <laughs> furnace goes bad, trade it in. Yeah. It's all right. What the heck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So, but, yeah, those, the, those are the kind of things. That's what this spring get ready is all about. Yeah. It's fine things that need to be done, take care of them. So when you're ready to go camping in, you know, later in April or May or wherever, you know, you can go. I really feel like that first camp out of the year is a mini shakedown cruise. It is, you know it what really I mean? is. Like I would not get in my camper after all winter and go to a thousand miles away to a reservation I made a year ago and hope when I get there, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. No, I, mean, I you want to get out and try yeah. to take a little short trip. I might, yeah. that's my opinion. I mean, that's what I, you know, I want to get out. I want to take a little short trip, make sure everything's working, make sure everything's great. But yeah. now we can go do our thing. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, really. I mean, I, I would, I would say 50 miles of home. Is yeah. The most for Just a, a little short you know, weekend, and a, and a weekend, whatever. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then that way, that way, like Dave said, you, you can go through everything. You know, we check everything out when we're doing our get ready. You know, we, 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 we do all that. We make sure we're ready to go, but by the time you drive it somewhere, yeah, you know, and you're bouncing down the roads and everything else, things happen. Yeah, you know, something comes loose, or you know, something falls off, whatever. You catch these things now, mm -hmm. you can fix them, and it doesn't become a potential trip break. Right. Later. Right. You right. know. Yeah. Um. I mean, things happen. No matter what, no matter how well you prepare, we know things happen. It's right. a camper, you know? Um, but the more preventive maintenance we do, the more proactive we are at being preventive, the less likely those catastrophic things that are going to ruin your trip are going to happen. And that's what this is all about. This is why... We spend so much time talking about maintenance mm -hmm. because we don't want those catastrophic things happening. You know, I got a quick question for you. Now, I'm thinking about this. Okay, so if I have a generator, all right, and my generator basically I don't use it a lot. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm on the change my oil every year schedule. Okay, okay. because I yeah. should, you know, if you have a generator, it should get changed every year, no matter what. You know, right? So. Should I have changed my generator at the end of the season and let it sit during the winter? Or is it better to change the generator oil now at the beginning of the season after it's sat all winter? Do you know, I, you know what I'm saying of, yeah. on that? I, I tend to go with the spring. I mean, I would uh, think so. And that's ready. Why, you know, I mean. But one of, the, one of the things that would be probably against that, and some people might say, this is kind of an opinion thing, I think, but... Um, you're, you, as you run the generator over the course of the of the of the year, you do get carcinogens and stuff in okay. the oil, you know. And having some of that stuff set there in a crankcase over the course of the winter could potentially do you know a little a little harm. I don't think it's going to do much, but it could do a little bit of harm 
So doing it in the in the fall and then putting it up isn't a bad thing. Okay. You know. Um, and it, and I, I mean, ideally, I'm still going to run anything. it once a month, even right. though it's winter anyway, right? Right. right. So, uh, so, but that's, but it's a good thing. If you didn't do it when you winterize, you should do it now. Absolutely. At the minimum, your once yeah. your oil you change. You want to do it once a year. You know, and if you've sure. got a, and that that goes for your, if you if you've got a motor home, that goes for the engine too. Even though we don't do oil changes here, you still need to get it done once a year. Even if you didn't put five thousand miles on the thing, even if whatever. You know, I mean, if you're running full synthetic, make sure you're doing that at least once a year. They might want you to do it once every six months. My opinion is that might be a little steep on that. Whatever, but yeah. you do what you want on that. But at least once a year on that kind of stuff, too. I mean, you know, the reality is is that the average mileage on a motorhome is about 5,000 miles a year. You know, I mean, we get a motorhome that's 10 years old. It's got 50,000 miles on it. Yeah. I mean, that's normal. If you can yeah. do more than that a year, you're doing great. Good yeah, for you. absolutely. But I, in my entire career, I haven't seen more than a handful of motorhomes with 100,000 miles on them. Absolutely. Like, for real. Absolutely. It just, you don't see, you know, and, and so... 22 years in this business, I think I probably, I can probably, literally, you know, count them on one I'm, hand. That's no joke, you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, just, which is cool, because the drivetrain nowadays, I mean, it lasts forever. That's like mm -hmm. the least of your worries and things like that, but change oil once a year on everything that has oil. <laughs> if you don't do it sooner than that. Now, obviously, if you're using, putting more miles and things like that, you need to follow recommended maintenance schedules yeah. um, for hours on a generator and for Four miles on your vehicle, uh, but otherwise at least once a year. And I mean, I'm of the opinion that every other year on your axles, minimum, unless you do, unless you drug it through some. If you get into wet and you need to do it, you need to do it. You know what I mean, right? If you've submerged but, your axles, I would probably do it. Right, a that's a definite. You know, but other than that, you know, I did 10,000 miles in two years. You know, and I had asked Rick the first year because I knew I did a lot of miles. He's like, "Now, nah, man, it's only a year." You know, so I really and, and everything was fine when they did mine. And mm -hmm. so, in every other year schedule on that's pretty good, unless you're extreme. Good for you if you can put that many miles on it. Or if you think, you know, I, that, one of the one of the old guys here, you know, Pete told me it's like well you know you just walk if you ever, ever in any doubt when you stop this is the old days right you just walk up and feel your hubs yeah because if your hub's hot you've got a problem yep so uh, and, that, and that's good advice i mean I that's mean, that that's not a bad you know, thing to do every unless single you've been time in an urban area where you've been on the brakes a lot and then your hubs right be hot you anyway, know but, but really yeah. and that's something i don't do but realistically when you stop for fuel it's not a bad mm -hmm. you know I, I do a walk around i always you know do a visual check around the thing because half it's plastic you don't know what might have happened <laughs> you know what i mean but you know now that i think about it just touching those hubs just yeah. to make sure you know because i tell you what if you feel it's going to be the, the yeah. real killer of, of bearings. And if you, you catch know. it at that point, you caught it just in time. Right. But you would rather overnight in that gas station parking lot than on the side of the road. So, Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You know, I mean, almost any trailer place can handle hubs if it needs to be. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. What else? You got anything else? What do you um, think? I mean, I, you want to do a, a basic visual inspection, like up underneath, inside. You want to make sure that nothing's got into the into the camper over the course of the winter, you know, mice, uh, raccoons, squirrels, you name it. What about my battery? They're all looking for something. Um, well, hopefully you took your battery off in the in the wintertime, like we advise, you <laughs> know, you and, you've been, and you've been storing it over the course of the winter on a trickle charger. Yeah, and you're just going to bring so it what, up, put it on, it's I ready to go. <laughs> if you didn't do it, it's probably discharged, and oh, it could man. look like that. Thank you, Michael. So Anyhow. these these... This is what happens to a discharged battery. Reminder, a 12-volt battery that is discharged is 10 and a half volts. At 10 and a half volts, it can do that. Mm. Now, those are 6-volt batteries, but same, 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 same thing, you know. So, yeah, just, now if I it's got... Just a battery, it was just a picture of a broken battery right. to illustrate what we're talking about. But 6-volt um, batteries, obviously, will do the same thing. They're going to be discharged at four and a half volts. I see. Okay. So, so there you go. All right. So check your battery, right? And yeah. uh, I don't so, know. Let's see. D winter. This is our slideshow. We'll just run through this yeah. real quick, right? So, washer, yeah. dishwasher. This is, of course, if you have you know a motorhome or a, or a higher end fifth wheel or something that has you know washers and dryers and stuff in them and uh, and dishwashers. So uh, basically, you're just going to run them. Yeah, I was going to say, you, know, you just run it, right? Yeah, you start, okay. a, start a cycle up uh, with a washer machine. It's really easy. Start a, uh, a wash cycle that runs warm, and I would do it after you've done everything else in the trailer because right. then you're going to put very little antifreeze into it. Yep. Um, as soon as you see water in the basket, 
stop it, put it into a drain or a spin cycle, let it drain out, and that's the washing machine. You're done. Um, dishwasher, basically the same thing. Start a wash cycle up. It only uses hot water when it's using it, um, so you don't have to worry about multiple valves and cold and hot. Um, so, but you, you wait till you can hear water inside of it and then put it in a, in a rinse cycle or something and uh, it'll drain back out and you're done with the dishwasher. Right on. So, ice makers, um, these can be really tricky because we've got so many different types of refrigerators and units now. We have household refrigerators, we have 12 volt refrigerators, we have, uh, you know, the old absorption refrigerators still. So we see all kinds of things. So absorption refrigerators, you could always access the valve from outside. Mm. And it was very easy. All you had to do was get an extension cord, put two quick disconnect terminals on it, unplug it, put that on, plug it into the, to the outlet in the box, and wait till you've seen the, the, the clear water running through the line going up to the ice maker. Got to make sure you got your bucket up under there for the ice because you're probably going to overflow the ice maker while you're doing this. But... And then you make a mess all over the freezer. But that was the easy way to do an absorption refrigerator with the uh, households and stuff. A lot of times um, you don't have a way to manually operate them. Uh, and you have to basically just turn the refrigerator on and sit there and let it run uh, with the water pressure. You know, you're probably going probably gonna to put some water in a fresh water tank and uh, just let it sit there and run. And it's probably going to take two or three cycles to make sure you get all of the antifreeze out of the system there. Um, I'll know when my ice cubes actually freeze. Right. Uh, when they freeze, or you'll have pink slushy ones still in there, and then you'll have some that are actually frozen. So um, your water filter, your cartridge filter, you want to take that bottom half of it off there and uh, make sure you put a new uh, filter cartridge in it. Sealants, basic adjustments, we kind of talked about that. Um, the important part, I think, in that slide was the fact that in a new unit, seals and sealants are covered by the manufacturer for 90 days after purchase, period. This is why I tell everybody you guys need to be checking your seals every three months. Because that's basically what they're telling you. They're telling you we did it brand new and we're good for three months. So I figure I better check mine every three months because that's as long as they say it's good for. Yeah. So Every single manufacturer that we represent has in their warranty booklet yeah, absolutely. this statement right here. Seals, sealants, and basic adjustments are only covered for 90 days. And here's the deal. Water damage is not an insurance claim, guys. Yeah. I mean, it is not a warranty claim either. Right. Okay. It right. doesn't, it's, it's, it's neither. Yeah. It's, it's a, These uh, are considered maintenance. Things. Yeah. It's like if you didn't change oil in your car and the engine blew up, you know, right. it's like, well, they're not going to cover it under warranty and your insurance isn't going to cover it either. So this is our change. This is what we do. Yeah. Um, very, very important. Right. Yes. Very important. So, um, roof inspection, we pretty much talked yeah, about talked that about already. That. Um, you, you can go. see the difference between the dirty and the clean roof and how hard it would be to look at the dirty one and see what kind of condition the yep. roof is in, let alone what your seals and stuff look like. Um, if you've got max air covers uh, around roof vents, you might want to take them off so you can see what the sealant looks like around the vent where it's actually attached to the roof. Um, some people will just seal around the outside of the max air cover. Which is okay. Mike, did we ever put up that video of me washing my roof? Do you know? Did we do that? Got it. So we'll get that. We I actually did a I, I washed my roof. We'll get that up, you guys. It's not been uh finaled yet, so we'll uh I did do a roof wash though. Dangerous so. stuff up there. When you wash a roof, be very, very careful because when you put soap and water on a rubber roof, you yeah. create basically liquid ice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to tell you, but yeah. you'll, you'll a, find out what a slip and slide. Dude, like. <laughs> it is like, yeah. I mean, if you ever seen those videos where they put tarps down with soap yeah. and go sliding down yeah. a hill, man, that'd be you yeah. right off the top. Me, anyway. So, so. these videos or these pictures um, show you what can happen when you do not take care of your seals and sealants on the side walls and the roof. Um, obviously, there was a leak on the roof there. 
it wasn't taken care of, that became a very expensive repair. That was probably close to $10,000 to rebuild the wall and the roof and inside panels and everything else. Um, yeah. That's the iceberg effect right there. And right. you only see 10% of what's really there. Yeah. And so. so that's why it's so important to prevent it because by the time you see it, it's just a disaster. So again, the exterior inspection, uh, we pretty much went yeah, over we all good. of this. Yeah. Not, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, and there's what Dave was talking about on the slide outs before. Um, as a general rule of thumb, slide outs do not get lubricated. You don't want, and you right. sure don't want to put oil on these mechanisms because oil is a, is a uh, petroleum distillant. It does not evaporate. It stays there and it collects dirt and dust. Right. Which, what does dirt and dust do? It wears everything out. So especially on the under frame one, which is the picture up in the top in the middle there, um, you don't want, because all of that down there is all exposed to the outside. Mm -hmm. So um, the only time like the Schwinn Tech or the cable slides are exposed to the outside is when they're when they're the rooms are open, good. Yeah. but down underneath there on the on the rack and pinion system, um, those are exposed all the time. So dry silicone, graphite, got it. Basically, the only thing we're lubricating these things for is really for noise. They gotcha. squeal because they just they drag on metal. Don't you love that when you show up at the mm -hmm. campsite, it's like 10.30 at night, you're trying yeah. to be quiet and you're sliding. Yeah. <laughs> sound, sound like a tank <laughs> going by, you know? <laughs> My tongue jack does that. It's yeah. bad. So. <laughs> um, so what happens when water gets inside of things? Delamination. So what delamination means is a separation between an outer skin and whatever it was held to, an inner wall or uh, whatever, it, whatever it may be. So in a laminated wall, you have an outside piece of, of fiberglass, you have your metal frame or wooden frame, whatever it is, you have a filler in there, which is usually fiberglass, uh, and then you have an inside wall panel. They take and spray these with glue, then they put the panels on them, and then they put it in a big machine that vacuums it together and it stays there for about 40 minutes. Um, these pictures were taken in the ACE, I think I took them in the ACE plant at uh, Thor several years ago when we were up there. Um, and they're actually building walls, side walls for the, for the motorhome. So that big machine on the right there is the actual vacuum laminator. So they put the panels all on, then they slide it down into this big vacuum uh, diaphragm, and they suck the air out of it, and that big rubber, the black thing there in the top of it, sucks it down, and it, they vacuum it to um, negative 45 kilograms, I believe it is, something like that. Uh, or no, 129 PSI. Forgot about that. I was um, going to say vacuum, that. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it stays there for 20 to 40 minutes, and, the, and it causes the, the glue to cure. So Nice. It's been a while since I read any of these. Yeah. I, did, I took them pictures probably eight years ago. So, um, And here we are talking about the underbelly, uh, rodent entry points, uh, loose underpinning, things like that, um, loose wires that might have come loose or something like that and be hanging down, just things that, that could cause a problem later. If we catch them during our spring ready, it won't cause that problem later right. because we've already done it and fixed it. So, tires, wheels, and axles. We kind of talked about this, but one of the things we didn't address that was in there was tightening the lug nuts before every trip. Mm. So, back up to that slide, Michael. So, uh, tighten the lug nuts, check for any damage to the rims, um, and that should be done before every trip. There's some torque specs that are for, they were generalized when I, when I wrote this originally, um, and they were, they were just numbers that I picked up from the internet uh, for basic torque on those size studs. Um, so there's very little manufacturer information that tells you what to torque your lug nuts to. So on this half-inch DeWalt thing I got, how do I set the torque on that? 
You don't. Thank you. Anyway. You, you, use, a t <laughs> you, you use a torque <laughs> stick is what you do. Anyhow. Right. right. Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, really, if you go up there and just, you know, do the NASCAR thing. I was say, you, know they're, you know they're tight. The old, not, yeah. you're showing your age. I, Don't they use like a one nut? Yeah, now? they use I a know. one nut thing now. Yeah, anyway. they're trying to use, trying Let's to. Let's try to keep know. our opinions yeah. to ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're trying to they're trying to be Formula One in the Indy car. It's so, just really too um, bad. Inspect the, inspect the tires. Look for signs of dry rot and stuff like that. Check yeah. the age of the tire. You know, yeah. and make sure. And again, and like and I said earlier, quick on age. Wear. Real quick on age. We're talking after five years, you're entering the danger zone, and right. at seven, you better just do it. Yeah, I mean, five to seven years is recommended. Right. Um, so since 2000, they use a a four digit uh, code, which is at the end of the uh, DOT tag on the tire. So, and that code is the week and year that that tire was manufactured. So that particular tire was manufactured in the 51st week of 2007. And know that if you're running around with the tires that came on your camper and your camper is a 2021, those tires may have been made in 2019, you might be surprised. Go yep. take a look. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like for real. No, <laughs> this That's stuff. not a joke. Yes. Yes. You know, you really need to just check it just to make sure. And even though the things may look just fine, I'm telling you, after five years, they're yeah. trailer tires. Trailer tires are, I mean, I'm not supposed to use terms like junk, but trailer tires are not the quality of what's on your car. Yeah. And, <laughs> so. and most of the tires that we see on our trailers, I hate to say it, but they're made in China. Yeah, so, no. you know, it's definitely keeping out. Here you got they're uneven not, wear. Yeah, they're not good years. No, you no. know, and we just saw the picture on dry rot. You know, that's important. Don't deny dry rot. If you see it, it's there. I don't care how old the tire it is. It needs to be replaced. If it's a low-quality tire, which some of them are, and if it's sat in the sun for its whole entire life, it might do this before five years. Yeah. And so yeah. It just that is a replace no matter what. And honestly, if you got four tires on there and you see it on one, just change all four at that point yeah. in time. Better yeah. safe than sorry. I've seen tires on travel trailers just destroy a kitchen before because it came apart. I've seen tires on motorhomes do tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage, Absolutely. and that's no joke. So, yes. And then you're out of commission for a very long time. So this motorhome that you paid a half million bucks for that's beautiful and is, you know, depreciating at the tune of we're not even going to talk about it is out of commission <laughs> for months and you can't do anything with it while you wait for it to get it repaired. So it's just super important uh, to do this, you know. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, so that last picture that Michael yeah. showed, uneven tread wear, this can, this can indicate several different things. It could indicate a bent spindle or a bad axle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or it could be uh, a uh, a tire pressure issue. So and it can be also on even loading yeah. as well. We yeah. can mess this up ourselves if we're not careful. Yeah. that would be extreme, but it is possible yeah. to 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 yeah. we, we want to load. But th that's something I think what Rick just said right there is if you're getting this, we need to see this thing. Right. I mean, probably you know. Right. I mean, it's it really is uh, probably needs to be looked at. You know. Yep. Agreed. So. This just tells the difference between radial and bias ply tires. Um, bias ply were, were, uh, were sheets uh, or cords, I should say, and radials are, are just sheets that go around making the cords radial. We haven't so. sold a camera with bias ply tires on it in 20 years. We can get bias ply tires for people that insist on having them. Um, if should. you're getting into really heavy sidewall tires, you might still get uh, some bias ply tires, mm. um, but even though even most of those have gone to uh, the bias ply was always considered a heavier duty tire. Gotcha, like military. Yeah. yeah. No. Truck heavy duty, you know stuff like that. Um, LP cylinder inspection. This is this is a big one for for you trailer owners. Um, you want to the first thing you want to make sure of is the date codes on the on the on the bottles. Um, if you take these bottles to be filled, it's required that the filler check the date codes on the bottle to make sure that they're not 12 years old, or if they're 12 years old, they have to be recertified. Um, and they are not supposed to fill them. Um, they're also looking for damage to the cylinder, dents, uh, bulges, cracks on a container surface. Um, the rings on the top or bottom can't be all bent up. Um, You'll get one of these inspections when you bring it here to be filled. Don't worry. Yes. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it is. It is required that we do these things. Yep. 
um, excessive rust or pitting. I, I will also say these are DOT tanks. These are only on trailers. Right. The ASME tanks that are on motorized units right. they don't. do not go through these particular inspections. Right. They, you can come in with one that's totally rusted up and it will still fill it. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that, but it is what it is. So, um, so the interior inspection, we kind of talked a little bit about this. You're going to go walk smoke around detector through. batteries, not yeah, a bad idea. Yeah, they, absolutely. Um, your mm -hmm. smoke detector, you want to test your LP detector. Um, it's a good idea to do an LP drop pressure system test, which as part of our spring ready, um, we do have that as part of our oh, sweet. get ready stuff. Um, new batteries for the smoke detector, carbon monoxide detectors. Um, and it's also every five years, uh, they are supposed to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So, um, and check the, the ceiling, wall seams, stuff like that. Um, just go through. You're, you're basically looking for any possible signs of water intrusion. Um, did we miss something on a roof? Did something happen over the course of the winter and we got some water in this thing? Mm -hmm. The sooner we can find these things and get them headed off and get things dried out, a lot of times you don't have to replace things if you get it dried out soon enough. You know, just like after the That's storm, true. you know, a lot of things got broke, water got inside of stuff. If we get in and get it dried out quick enough, you know, you're not going to have to necessarily replace a bunch of wall panels and flooring and stuff like that because of it. Um, you're just going to go in and, and uh, uh, you know, get things dried out. That's so. what, you know, when I was in sales, the worst thing, I, the thing I didn't want to hear is when somebody's talking about their trade and they're like, well, we haven't used it for years. And then you're just like, oh, no. You know, then everything that's gone wrong within the last few years, we'll have to take care of. Like, if you use your camper frequently and you keep up with all this stuff, um, there's not as much to do when it comes time to do your spring ready. You're not going to find as much stuff wrong because you kept up with it over right. the course of the year and everything yeah. like that. And you do that by using it because when you use it, you break it, and then you fix it. And that's how things get, you know, maintained sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but, right? Yeah, that's right. So is that, is that our presentation, Mike? Is that everything? Yeah. yeah? Okay, so, cool. Um, I don't know. You got any trips planned or anything? Um, I, I'm going to get on an airplane and go to Washington here as Sweet. soon as I can. Okay, I'm good. Just trying to get something planned out with my daughter. Good, so. good, good, good. I got an event this weekend. Yeah. We're doing Chub Trail Race. So if you guys are into mountain biking and you want to see crazy people, oh, I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but they'd be complimented by that, to be honest with you. They, they do this stuff called enduro racing where they ride up to the top of the hill and then they they get timed just in the downhill part and they do this like over and over again in stages and then they add it up and whoever has the lowest total time wins and it's crazy and it's fun and they, that's what we're doing this weekend at West Tyson County Park out here in St. Louis County off Lewis Road. You might call, you to might call some of them Sunday. tree huggers. Dude, this is wild. They hung a tree at about 30 miles an hour, and then the ambulance comes. Uh, yeah. That usually happens about once. Uh, so I'm serious. These guys are uh, brave, um, and uh, they do. They bomb down these hills on these bikes. So uh, we're going to be there it's on Sunday. Me. It's going to be fun. And then, of course, we got Eclipse coming up and stuff like that. So you guys, um, stay tuned. You know, we got the sale one more time. March 29th and 30th is the new model uh, sale where we've got all the newest, latest, and greatest stuff on sale. Awesome floor plans. If you haven't had a chance, check it out at BuyerLearRV.com. You can come out and do a preview of these things this weekend if you want. You know, maybe they'll probably give you a deal anyway if you're here. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely the best selection of the year, guys. That's what this time of year is for. Um, they did a lot of new stuff. We have got so yeah. much new stuff. I mean, I was telling them about the Extreme 365s with the roofs and the travel trailers as tall as fifth wheels. Yeah. The VCX floor plans with those versatile cargo where it's like, half toy hauler but not you know and things like that and then you've got all these great the view floor mm -hmm. plan i told them we just put up the 29 view with the hidden bunk room mm -hmm. that yeah. video yeah. hit today i mean all kinds of cool new stuff you guys mm -hmm. uh our modern buggy folks have been coming out with new stuff we got a big buggy now that's really cool um, <laughs> mike's laughing because he doesn't want me i can't say it <laughs> i'm not gonna say it <laughs> i'm not gonna say oh i want to say it. there was an article in <laughs> rvbusiness.com you know that they're planning on making truck campers so if you oh. want one of those make sure you call up and ask for eric the sales manager and you tell him you want a modern buggy please truck don't. camper okay please, don't. Please, don't. <laughs> please do i don't want i don't want to service truck campers please don't. anyway 
Oh my gosh, I think they're even going to make one for my Colorado. I don't know. Ooh, no, anyhow. No, All right, no. so call Eric Fitzgerald at 636 938 2000 and you tell him you want Just a modern buggy truck camper, okay? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, seriously, they are going to be cool, man. We're gonna, um, everything these guys do. We're going to burn for this. No, nah, I know. It's great. <laughs> it's fun. So, And also, I hope you guys got a nice look at that Winnebago Access a little bit oh. that Rick did. You know, those are cool. Um, that's new here at Byerly. I tell you what, for $29,995, I uh, do not know that you will find another travel trailer uh, that is seriously as built as well, high quality, and well done as this thing. And that's yeah, no it says joke. Winnebago on it, right? Well, it does. Yeah. You know, and that, ought, real, that, ought to, that ought to be good for something. I, we did an interview uh, with the rep. Really good. He talks about the product. You can check that out on the YouTube channel. Um, but, like, for example, their, the sidewall is 50% thicker metal than what they use, which is the difference between, like, 0.3 and 0.2. But right. still... We're yeah. talking, I mean, you can tell, you guys, it's really it's cool. A difference. It is, it's nice. You know, Winnebago, it really does, they really do hold themselves to a high standard. And they really do the best job of parts of anybody probably out there. I mean, in the motorhomes, yeah. like, everything's got a part number. Yeah. Oh, Mike, now that's Mike. That was Mike. You can blame Mike for that right there. So, when it come, look at that. Oh, there's Earl. Hey. Anyway, Earl's the guy that keeps his eye on the, he's, this is his company, man. This is cool. He's put out some really cool stuff. And there you go. So, um, if you're interested... Call Eric Fitzgerald at 636 I'm not going to service him. <laughs> He's obviously not watching her. I would have yeah. seen a comment I'm not going to service now. him. Yes, he is. <laughs> so, tie-down systems. I'm not going to service Don't him. Don't you want tie-down systems no. again? I want no. one for my Colorado. James will do that over Anyhow. here. <laughs> Guys, uh, seriously, lots of new stuff. Lots of cool stuff this We're year. It's really this. cool. <laughs> ah, it's fun. <laughs> Anyhow, I want to get one for my Colorado. <laughs> anyway. Um, We're having too much fun now. That's what this is all about. We sell fun, right, guys? So <laughs> if you're interested in fun, come on out here to Buyer the RV. You can see me. You can see Rick. You can see Mike. See us all. Um, and, Get your uh, service you appointments Piper. made. She did camera tonight, so she's at the parts yeah. counter. Yeah. Um, fast lane and service. You know, yes. so when you call your home dealer that you bought it at, and they're like, ah, it's going to be a couple of weeks, and you're out of warranty, and you just need to get something done and just pay yeah. for it and be done. Come on down, you know. Right you never know. You might like it here. Hmm. Yep. Might buy your next one here. Hmm. What do you know? Yeah. Anyway, the, the reality is this, and that's for real, you guys. We could have built a brand new shiny showroom on the hill up there, but no, we did not. We built a 16 base service facility, a 88,000 square foot climate controlled indoor valet storage facility, and outdoor storage, because that is what this business needs. And when you're a company like Byerly RV that promises good after the sales service, you better be willing to put your money where your mouth is. And as you can see, we are more than willing to do that, you guys. So come on out here to Byerly, see what your home dealer should be right rick right guys thanks for watching thanks i'm dave i'm rick we will see you next time bye